Hello everyone, I am Dweather Dude. welcome back, and today we are giving our third outlook on the 2021 Atlantic Hurricane season. Before we get started with the video though, if you guys have not already, please consider subscribing. It really does help my channel grow. I want to thank you guys so much for 2,000 subscribers. We've flown past and hopefully we can hit our next goal of 3,000 subscribers soon. And also to help this video reach more people, please consider liking and sharing it as well. And let's get into the video now. So yes, we have our third 2021 hurricane season forecast and discussion. I do have to say a lot of things have changed, so it's definitely worth sticking around for. Uh, first, we have our um, we have some material provided by the Borough of Meteorology uh, based in Australia, and you can see that for the Nino 3-4 region, right in April, right negative like 0.6 is still in La Nina zone, and we could even be going back to neutral zone by June or August. But either way, that is the neutral and a Active hurricane seasons still happen in a neutral year. I mean, look at 2005. Before 2020, 2005 was like the, one of the most active years ever, probably. And that was a neutral year. 2005 was not an La Nina year. 2020 was. All right, so that, so active years can happen with ENS or neutral is what I'm trying to say here. And you can see that I mean, pretty much all the models agree that even through August, September, like pretty much going to be staying neutral. Maybe even going downward a little bit through September and October, that's not good. Because if that trend were to continue, we might even be back close to La Nina by October or November. Now remember, what Australia considers La Nina is slightly different from us. So I would say right about here is La Nina, just before the 0.4 tick mark by American standards. So a few models do hint at that. All right? And there also are a few models that do hint at El Nino because El Nino is right here. All right? So... Some models do go the opposite way, but that green line does give you like the base, like in the middle. Um, and, and that's what you like to look at, like the, the mean. All right, so this is the Southern Oscillation, the SOI. All right, and this basically, I did put some text here to explain. So positive SOI values um, above 8 do indicate like a general La Nina event, while anything negative 8 and below uh, do indicate an El Nino. So you can see, again, even with the SOI, so if we were above... So five, six, so I'd say anywhere above here is La Nina, and then anywhere below here is El Nino. So you can see, we, we have been anywhere between neutral and La Nina for the, past, for, the, for the past few months, actually. Even farther than that, even all the way back to October. Like, even October, July, we were still in La Nina. Like, the last time we were in some kind of, quote-unquote, El Nino type conditions was back in July, but that doesn't mean we weren't in El Nino. All right, that's just the last time the SOI was below negative 8. All right, so here are like the models. You can see the eight models that were seven models we have here and the mean below that, which is the sum of all of them. All right, so April or sum of them, um, like the average is what I'm trying to say. So for April, you can see most models are neutral, but they're between neutral and La Nina. They're not on the positive side of neutrals, I like to call it. They're on the negative side. So closer to La Nina, but still neutral nonetheless. You can see by May, June, right, everything starts backing up to like, that's pretty much what I've been explaining a lot, right? You can see the models do start to back up a little bit, but the mean, because all these other ones are so close to zero, the mean still remains at 0.4 or negative 0.4, which is La Nina, or pretty close to it, I should say. Uh, July, at this point, a couple models are positive side neutral, a couple models are, po are left side neutral, negative side neutral, but still in that general neutral zone, even through August as well, you can see. But the mean does kind of hold at negative 0.4. Um, then again, the models are kind of like, I wouldn't say all over the place, but there are some models that are in disagreement still right now. And BOM, of course, is the Borough Meteorology, because that's where this is coming from. So they have it right on the zero line by August. All right. And they do have their own model at the top there. So I there is no data for March 31st yet, but we can get March 30th. I got to be honest, SST anomalies will, and even sea service temperatures themselves will not really change in a day. So this is the latest map here. Uh, and you can see that, I mean, La Nina, it's trying to hold on, right? I mean, you can see this is like the Nino 3-4 region, basically below Hawaii kind of in this zone. Um, I would say it's holding on off better, actually, in the Nino 1-2 region. Although even some are starting to work in there as well. But I think the La Nina started holding itself in a bit more. It was starting to look pretty weak. Um, it could fluctuate a bit, but overall, it will start to go away. You can see like little specks of orange and, and uh, gray, which is like neutral. 
Um, and we're going to get a zoomed in view on the Gulf and Caribbean as well, so don't worry about that. But even the, if you can see there, the northeast and the east coast, overall, is pretty warm. I'd say in mid-Atlantic and northeast, it's pretty warm. Uh, right off the coast of Africa, it's slightly below average, but you go out into the MDR and the convection zone, or where the MDR, the main development region where we see development, and you can see that those waters are above average. Now, we zoom in on the Gulf and Caribbean, you can see, yeah, we are we are way above average, especially in the central and eastern. I mean, the entire Gulf is basically above average, but the central and east Gulf is the most has is most radically above average. Um, even the Western Atlantic, north of the Caribbean, between the Caribbean and the East Coast, um, those waters there are pretty pretty far above average as well, by about a couple degrees Celsius. Now the now Caribbean, however, actually has kind of lost because the Caribbean used to be filled in with light yellow, maybe some shades of orange here and there, but now. We're starting to see these gray zones take over, which those are your like closer to average water. So Caribbean is still average to slightly above average, but it has lost some of its, um, it has, I would say it dropped, it did drop a little bit. All right. So if we look at the uh, sea surface, not the sea surface temperature anomaly trend, but the sea surface temperature trends themselves over the past seven days. Uh, and you can see, so anyone that green color, it's very little changes happened, negative or positive. Um, obviously, the warmer colors are warmer changes in waters, and blue is the opposite of that. So you can see in the Nina 3-4 region, it's been kind of back and forth. You see some green, which is like kind of remaining the same-ish. You got some yellows and oranges with me, some uh, warming up, and some blues, I mean, cooling down. So really nothing changed. All right, but overall, for the Nina 3-4 region, I would say there are some slightly more warmer colors than there are cooler colors, so keep that in mind. However, like I said, over in the Nina 1-2 region, they're doing a little better, but that's not what determines our... our our like what climate pattern we are in um when we look out in the tropical atlantic though you can see that it's actually gone down uh, off the coast of africa and in the mdr region however the opposite can be true for the gulf of mexico my goodness they really fired up there and that's why you really don't want to look at the mdr yet because that's not where we see development when we start seeing development whether it be march april may june you really won't see development out in the mdr until maybe second half of july or early july if you're lucky but probably second half of july and then August and September, and then by October, November, well, October, we can still see development out there, but then by late October, November, the activity starts, shift, starts to shift closer to home again, again. So if we zoom in on the Gulf and Caribbean, you can see that again, a lot of warm colors, right? Like a lot of warm colors, even like a few degrees change in the Eastern Gulf. So really big warm up in the Gulf there. And that is a little bit worrying. Also, like I said, between the Bahamas and the East Coast, the waters off the Western Atlantic there are pretty much warming up. And Caribbean, like I said, either staying the same or maybe cooling down a bit in the central and eastern part. Northern Caribbean, closer to the Gulf Stream, it has actually warmed up a little bit over the past seven days. All right. Now, you can see the dry air graphic really hasn't changed much either. Um, I would still say there's a good amount of dry air. These clouds are just over are over top of the dry air. Like, there is still dry air here. Don't think that there isn't, because there is. But it's just over top of it, so, you, so it's harder to see. But there is still dry air. All right, no really gaps except in the western Gulf uh, off the east coast. But again, that's mainly like the blue is where there really isn't dry air. The east coast, that's because uh, we have a storm system heading right now and there's rain. All right, so that's that's why you can see the clouds right here. Uh, pretty good rain event for today. But, you know, some areas in, in the east, depending on where you are, do need it. All right, so here we are with the convection map. And ever since I found this, I think it was a year ago, uh, I definitely I definitely enjoy using this ever since. And you can see the green means more convection. Now, it is early in the season, so don't think just because you see green, that means, oh, no, we're going to have tropical development. No, not yet, all right? Take it easy a little bit. But the green does hint at what we could be seeing in the future, all right? So look at the Caribbean, especially the Central and Eastern Caribbean, um, parts of the Central Atlantic from April 3rd to April 10th, According to this GEFS model, and you'll see another model as well, not just this one, but there is increased convection there. And that is where the development, um, where we can see development. Now, don't think just because there's brown colors, that doesn't mean tropical cyclones can't go through there. Tropical cyclones could still travel through anywhere shaded in brown. All that brown is talking about is the convection that's in the air to form the system. The system can still travel through there. All right. That doesn't necessarily mean, so hopefully that makes sense. All right. Just because there's like brown shading doesn't mean a tropical system can't go through there. It will. It just means there's less convection in that area. But more convection in the green line you can see by the Caribbean. Right? But look at the G or CFS model, and it's even it's even worse. So both models here, and also over northern South America as well. 
but in still in the Caribbean, even into the central and eastern part of the Atlantic, cl uh, closer to Europe. Also some increased convection there as well. And this is a slightly different time frame, but still pretty similar. 7th to the 14th all right, of April. So like that second-ish week of April. All right, so tropical cyclone heat potential hasn't changed all that much. I'm starting to see like this moderate zone expand out a little bit more. I'm seeing some more development of a little bit more heat down here. But really, the Gulf of Mexico is still... Even though the sea surface temperatures are starting to warm up here and here where I shaded in black, it, it still had to have that below the ocean surface kind of heat, right? It's not just all about the surface temperature. I mean, it has to do with it. It's a big factor, but it's not just the sea surface temperature. All right, so here is the probability of tropical cyclone genesis. And you can see we have our, our four models up here that this is kind of like based around uh, FNMOC, NCEP, uh, GEM, Canadian, or excuse me, that does the same thing, uh, European as well. Um, but they are hinting. Now, sometimes at pinks, you have to look at South America. Sometimes those are just, um, those are just placed there by default. But you can see that isn't supposed to be there either, right? Like you can see a 10 to 20% in that same region we were just talking about, by the way. And this is over the next five days. Now, the National Hurricane Center hasn't put anything about this as far as I know. Um, so, but there is a chance. All right, just the conditions are getting, you know, a little bit more favorable, and it's the last day of March, all right? And then April Fool's is tomorrow. Right, we're going to have a Category 5 hurricane on April Fool's. All right, it's a little too early for April Fool's. Uh, but you can see up in the northern Atlantic, 30 to 40% chance of development in that yellow shading right there. All right, but that also has to do with the storm system that's exiting the east today. Um, but northern Atlantic, I mean, northern Atlantic, is the, this, that would be the region. It would either be closer to home, like in, like, far south of the Caribbean, or something subtropical could happen up here. That is usually what happens. Uh, that's the kind of early season development we can see. I mean, hell, we had we had Hurricane Alex, which was I think back in 2016. Was it Alex? But there was a hurricane up here in January. I'm pretty sure it was actually 2016. Yeah. So you can see the wind shear anywhere in red. That is where basically there's the shear is not conducive for development. Yellow means it's it's eh, it's okay. Green means Good to go. Uh, you can see, other than in the central Atlantic right there, there's really the wind shear is still like I would call it unbearable, and that's no lie. All right, I mean it's March, about to be April. Wind shear is supposed to be high this time of, this time of year, but we like to see when we look at mass like this with we like to see how far it is from average because then that can help us predict what could happen later on the season. Like for example, look at this in the central Atlantic, the shear is still pretty high, but anywhere in this blue zone, we had shear that dropped 10 to 20 knots in just the past 24 hours. So that really does say something, right? Um, even in the Caribbean, we're starting to see shear wear off a little bit, but other parts, like even out by Africa, shear has dropped about 10, 15 knots in the last 24 hours. Same with the Southeast, because there was a storm system, some severe weather that just moved through, so shear will be dropping on the very back end of that. So looking at the Caribbean here, uh, wind shear overall, again, just above that black line, that average line, but again, it goes up and down very quickly. Same thing for Chaco Atlantic, um, again, Hurricane season outlook by judging by the ACE, which means the accumulated cyclone energy, the best chance right now looks to be what we call an above average season, sourced from Colorado State University. All right. And runner up would be near average and extremely active or pretty close together. And then below average season, we're thinking probably 10% uh, chance, very low. So remember on the right, this isn't CSU's official outlook. Again, this is what their definition is of a above average season. All right. And since from the Colorado State University, since above average seems to be the most likely choice by them right now, uh, those are the numbers I put in for them. But my outlook still remains the same. Maybe I'll get a change in the next one because I've just there has been some changing things, but I don't think it's quite enough. We don't have quite enough certainty yet. And again, it's first day of April tomorrow. Thirteen to sixteen named storms, seven to nine hurricanes, and two to four majors. But there will definitely be changes. To this again, CSU twelve to fifteen, six to eight hurricanes, and two to three major hurricanes. So thank you guys so much for watching. I am The Weather Dude signing off. Till next time, I will catch you guys in the next video.